In the historical order, I will take you from the birth of the church to the year 400 A.D., and then you decide. From Barnabas, who knew the disciple John and all 12 of Jesus' disciples, and he traveled with Paul to evangelize among the Gentiles, he wrote, quote, The final stumbling block approaches. For the whole time of your faith will profit you nothing unless now in this wicked time we also withstand coming sources of danger. Then the evil one, speaking of the Antichrist, may find no means of entrance. From the Didache, for in the last days false prophets and corruptors shall be multiplied, and the sheep shall be turned into wolves, and love shall be turned into hate. For when lawlessness increases... They shall hate and persecute and betray one another, and then shall appear the world deceiver as son of God, and shall do signs and wonders, and the earth shall be delivered into his hands, and he shall do iniquitous things which have never yet come to pass since the beginning. Then shall the creation of men come into the fire of trial, and many shall be made to stumble and shall perish. But they that endure in their faith shall be saved from under the curse itself. From Justin Martyr a contemporary of Polycarp, he wrote, The man of apostasy, in other words, the Antichrist, who speaks strange things against the Most High, shall venture to do unlawful deeds on the earth against us, the Christians. From the shepherd of Hermas, you will tell, therefore, those who preside over the church to direct their ways in righteousness, that they may receive in full the promises with great glory. Happy ye who endure the great tribulation that is coming on, and happy they who shall not deny their own life. For the Lord hath sworn by his Son that those who denied their Lord have abandoned their life in despair. For even now these are to deny him in the days that are coming. From Irenaeus, an apostle of Polycarp, and he also knew Justin Martyr, he wrote, and then he points out the time that his Antichrist tyranny shall last, during which the saints shall be put to flight. Irenaeus also writes, In a still clearer light was John, in the Apocalypse, indicated to the Lord's disciples what shall happen in the last times, and concerning the ten kings who shall arise, these have one mind, and give their strength and power to the beast. These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them, because he is the Lord of lords and King of kings, and they shall lay Babylon waste, and burn her with fire, and shall give their kingdom to the beast, and put the church to flight. After that, they shall be destroyed by the coming of our Lord. Irenaeus continues, And therefore, when in the end the church shall be suddenly caught up from this, it is said, there shall be tribulation such as not has been seen since the beginning, neither shall be. For this is the last contest of the righteous, in which they overcome, they are crowned with incorruption. Irenaeus writes again, for all these and other words were unquestionably spoken in reference to the resurrection of the just, which takes place after the coming of the Antichrist and the destruction of all nations under his rule, those who have suffered tribulation, as well as escaped the hands of the wicked one. From Hippolytus, a contemporary of Tertullian, he wrote, The one thousand two hundred and threescore days, the last half of the week, during which the tyrant is to reign and persecute the church. Hippolytus continued, Now, concerning the tribulation of the persecution, which is to fall upon the church from the adversary. And then Hippolytus goes on to quote the entire chapter of Revelation chapter 12. From Tertullian, he says, The dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed, from which shall come their incorruptibility, and these also shall, in the crisis of the last moment, and from their instantaneous death, while encountering the oppressions of Antichrist. Tertullian also writes, The souls of the martyrs are taught to wait, that the beast Antichrist, with his false prophet, may wage war on the church of God. And then there is Cyprian, a contemporary of Hippolytus. He wrote, the day of affliction has begun to hang over our heads and the end of the world and the time of the Antichrist to draw near so that we must all stand prepared for the battle. From Athanasius, he wrote, They have not spared thy servants, but are preparing the way for Antichrist. 
from Ephraim the Syrian, a contemporary of Athanasius. He wrote, Nothing remains then except that the coming of our enemy, Antichrist, appear. From Cyril of Jerusalem, a contemporary of Ephraim the Syrian, he wrote, The church declares to you the things concerning Antichrist before they arrive. It is well that, knowing these things, thou shouldest make thyself, that is the church, be ready beforehand. And then from Jerome, a contemporary of Cyril of Jerusalem, he writes, I told you that Christ would not come unless Antichrist had come before. And may I remind you of what the Apostle Paul himself said years before any of the aforementioned church fathers? Paul, a true church father and one who had been caught up to paradise, as he says in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, to see the end of all things, he wrote the church at Thessalonica in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verses 1 through 5. Concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered to him, we ask you, brothers, not to become easily unsettled or alarmed by some prophecy report or letter supposedly to have come from us saying that the day of the Lord has already come. Don't let anyone deceive you in any way, for that day will not come until the rebellion occurs and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the man doomed to destruction. He will oppose and exalt himself over everything that is called God or is worshipped so that he sets himself up in God's temple, proclaiming himself to be God. And then Paul says, don't you remember that when I was with you, I used to tell you these things.